Where do I draw the line between free and paid content? This is a question I get a lot. In fact, I had it recently from a viewer, Olga, and I wanted to take the time to jump on and answer this. So if you're a coach or consultant or trainer, you're in the transformation business and you want to get more clients, there's a very good chance that somewhere along the line, someone has said to you, you need to create free content. You need to create, create free content because that's what's going to help position you, attracting potential clients. But because of that advice, and it is good advice, I'll explain why in a second, a lot of people then have a dilemma, well, where do I draw the line between free and paid content? And I think as I examine this, that the, the question behind that question is, well, if I um, give too much away, then it, why would there be any neat reason for people to pay me because they've got all the stuff for free? And um, if, I don't, if I don't give enough, then will people really get to see the value of what I'm offering? So what happens is then this question, what's the difference between free and paid content? Where do I draw the line? Um, becomes a balancing act. And today I want to talk to you about why I think that's the wrong question and what you should be asking instead. So the question about giving too much, not giving enough, it really is coming from scarcity thinking. And what you really want to do is stop and think about what is the purpose of free content in your business? So when I first used free content in my business and I was using free content way before I had an online business. So I'm going right back to the nineties when I used to write articles for a trade magazine. And at the end of my articles, I used to invite readers to um, phone me actually, this was before the internet, to get a free report that I had offer where they could find out more. And so this is a proven strategy for getting people to raise their hands. And back then that was how I was using it. I was offering out free content to help me identify the most people, who, the people who were most interested in solving the problem that I could help them solve. And then, this is a crucial bit, after I gave them the free content, it also triggered um, a series of messages from me where I was aiming to get them to then go on to purchase what I was offering. So what I'm saying to you here is there is a difference between getting people to raise their hands and then turning that raised hand into paying business. So if you've struggled with getting free content to work for you, to help you attract more clients, my guess is because you're getting those two things muddled. So I would say the biggest mistake that I see coaches and consultants makes when it comes to free content is the assumption, well, if I just keep churning out free content and just keep people giving people lots of free stuff, <clears throat> then sooner or later, they're going to be ready to say yes to what I'm offer offering. And actually, you have to be much more strategic about that. You need to make the distinction with your content what is the content that is going to get people to raise their hands? So I'm going to get, get to find out like who are the people who are most interested in what I'm offering. And they're going to get something out of that exchange too. They're going to get some, something that helps them solve an immediate problem. And then, so that's one type of content. And then the next type of content is what is the content I now need to continue to put in front, front of that person who's already raised their hands so that they can um, start to move along the buying decision. What is the content that I need to give that person that's going to help them to say yes to the next step? They're very different things. So you need to be clear when you're creating content, what is the purpose of the content you're creating? If you're just churning out content to share tips or in the hope that, well, this will help people. And so hopefully they'll end up buying from me. You are not being strategic enough. You need to be very, very clear. So the win-win in uh, you know, doing it this way is I was getting to identify these are the people who are most interested in solving the problem that I can help them solve. So now I know who the people are that I need to follow up with. But that was a key piece behind the scenes that isn't always sort of visible to the naked eye. It's just how much happens after the person has raised their hands to get them to say yes to the next step. In my business now, I like I have email sequences that, that actually go on for weeks to achieve this purpose of turning that raised hand into paying business. You know, it takes much more than one step. And so you need to be asking yourself two questions. It's like the question to get people to raise their hand normally is content which um, solves a specific problem. It has a nice hook and it can give some immediate benefit, immediate gratification. That is great content to get people to create, uh, raise their hands. The content that converts has to answer a different set of questions. It has to um, explain to the person why they need to solve this problem that you can help them solve, 
why um, the solution that you have is better than all of the other solutions that they might be considering, including doing nothing, um, why they could should get this particular service from you or this solution from you, and, and as opposed to all of the other places that they could provide this solution, it needs to do all of that. And it needs to overcome um, skepticism, any questions that they might have, and really, you know, anything that might stop them from saying yes to the next step. So content that converts needs to have a lot more thinking go into it to really guide people all of those steps. And it's unlikely that you're going to do it all in one step. Um, a good example would be a free webinar. I've, I've used webinars a lot in my business and they can achieve the purpose of getting people to raise their hands and then convert them into paying business. But honestly, it's rare to do it in, in, in one step. It's the minority that will say yes all in one go. And actually, you need to be designing your conversion systems to actually answer all of those questions that might come up. So when it comes to creating free content, don't make the mistake of thinking that if you just churn out tons of free content and kind of get yourself into a content machine, that that's going to create bias from you for you. It doesn't work like that. You need to be strategic about what you're doing. You need to make the distinction between this is the content I'm putting out there that's going to get people to raise their hands. And now here is the series of content I deliver to that person who's raised their hands with an intention of getting them to say yes to the next step, becoming a paying customer in my business. I hope that's helped you to make that distinction. I haven't heard many people talk about this and I think it's important. So the question that you should be asking isn't, um, you know, what is, um, where's the line between free and paid? It's actually the wrong question. The question you should be asking is, what's the content that I can be putting out there to get people to raise their hands and take that first step towards me? And then what's the content I need to follow up with afterwards that's going to turn that raised hand into paying business? Um, if you have any questions, do drop them below. I do read them and they guide me in terms of what content I'm creating for you to serve you. And um, yeah, you know, maybe your question will be something that I answer in a future video. So until then, I hope this has given you something to think about. I'll see you next time.